I don't know how to rap. This one is from the boys in the boom <laughs> system. Top down AC with the cooling system. That's all I know. <laughs> Beautiful. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's the cold open. Nikki, is needed. that you? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Hand Me Down Podcast. We're your hosts. My name is Natalia. And I'm Alan. And thank you so, so, so very much for joining us yet again for another episode of the podcast. Um, and you know what? We have we have a little announcement to, to make. A little, what's that called? Drop the egg? Or no? What's the... Just, no, I was thinking <laughs> disclaimer a little... Disclaimer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to... Basically... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, long story short um we have decided collectively the three of us that it is a good time for us to kind of step back from the podcast a little bit i think not completely abandon the project in its entirety but you know just take a little bit of the break so this episode is going to be one that is going to mark kind of like the end of quote unquote season one even though there's 24 no 25 25 so you know what's funnier than 24 <laughs> 25 25 <laughs> 25 so um yeah so we just wanted to make that quick announcement really quick um we will talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the episode but you mm-hmm. know as always please don't let that make you click away uh, stick around and yeah and we're gonna talk about some fun stuff today still mm-hmm. yeah so as, as always um well first of all i think the episodes are gonna not be as consistent moving forward it's gonna just whenever we feel like it um So there there will still be episodes out, but not as nearly as consistently as we have been pumping them out. Um, But yeah, as as always for this episode, don't click away, as as Natalia said. Uh, First of all, we're going to catch up because Mm -hmm. it's been almost a month since we recorded last time. (laughs) Um, It hasn't been a month for you guys, but it has been a month for us. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we're going to go ahead and move into Internet Corner as always, talk about some fun stuff there. And then we're going to go ahead and talk about kind of the movies or the things that that made us fall in love with filmmaking and, and why we want to pursue that mm-hmm. uh, and then kind of talk about why we uh, are taking a little bit of a step back. So, yeah. So stick around. It's still a fun episode, guys. Don't be sad. I can hear you guys sniffling. <laughs> I can hear you guys crying. No, nah, but <laughs> for real, we're super excited to get into this episode. So as always, we always start with a little, little catching up. Mm-hmm. Okay, so no. How are you? Let me beat you to it. <laughs> because if you guys are watching through video, <laughs> Natalia is hella swagged out right now. I look like I'm hungover. <laughs> <laughs> I fl- hungover at the studio at 8 p.m. At 8 p.m. <laughs> what a day. What a Monday it's been. What is that, Garfield? <laughs> I hate Mondays. Uh-huh. Um, every- Classic. Staple. <laughs> Staple. Every time I wear sunglasses, because I don't wear sunglasses often, and I really should, now that I think about it, because they actually protect your eyes. Um, I feel like um, that PSA one for <laughs> PSA for anybody who's looking for <laughs> eye health tips. Um, I feel like that one girl from the movie Bridesmaids where they give her like anxiety medicine in the plane and she never gets like, that. you've never seen Bridesmaids? <gasps> I know Have it's like seen? one of those staples. Who else? Who's the filmmaker for that? Because I know they made another movie that I think I liked. I enjoyed. Uh, well, I know the writer is Christian Wig, no? She, mm. But did you not study that in screenwriting? No, but I I know it was it was thrown around a lot. Like, uh, I was like, you should watch it, you should watch it, but never assigned. Really? Oh well, I watched it in FTV thirty three, which is you took too. Yeah. Oh well, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, side tangent. Different teacher. Different teacher. From Professor. Room. Yeah. But there's a scene in that movie where she's terrified of flying, and so they give her um, anxiety medicine. What do they give her? Xanax. Do they give her Xanax? <laughs> <laughs> Xanax. <laughs> and um, she's just like gets more and more like relaxed and stuff, and she's wearing like sunglasses and stuff. So every time I wear sunglasses, I think of that scene where they're trying to kick her out of first class, and she goes, "Help me, I'm poor." <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what I feel like right now. But anyway, I digress. That was a long tangent. Um, <laughs> how am I doing? Yes. I have been battling a sty. A sty. And for those of you who don't know what that is, um, Google it, but brace yourself um, <laughs> because it's not a pretty... Don't go to images. It's not a pretty um, uh, sight to see. <laughs> but I have been dealing with a sty for the past two weeks. Um 
It's the biggest one that I've had yet. I was very prone to get them when I was younger. I was gonna say, I feel like I'm like, I feel like you get them. I've, I <laughs> not get them pretty often, but I get them often. I get the time them, that I've known you. Yeah, two years. <laughs> I get them pretty often, and they usually start to come around weather changes or stress. And right now, it's both. <laughs> So I'm just like, God damn. And so when I was younger, I would get them a lot and I would only get them around October. So I had to, uh, whatever I was going to be for Halloween had to like cater to the fact that my eye was fucked up. So I would be like a zombie, like a pirate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, but now it's not October. So I have no excuse to be looking like I got smacked in the face. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I've been dealing with that. Um, I went to the doctor. The doctor dead ass told me to thug it out, um, <laughs> which was crazy. They were like, hey, could she go away around 10 days? And it was like, it's been 14. <laughs> Damn. So here I am still thugging it out, um, but still showing, showing up. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I, these glasses are courtesy of my mom. My mom. Let's Which give it up. we have some buttons here. Oh, not, not necessarily curated by Milena, but mm -hmm. they're the, the ones that this, that little thing comes with. Oh, so. the default buttons. Say that one more time. Oh, uh, the courtesy of my mom. The laughing button. It was laughing. I forgot. <laughs> I put them on here and I forgot where they were. Well, anyway, my mom is in in the studio audience today. Let's give it. Let's give it up. Oop! I'm Oop. trying to find the claps. Oop. Oh, we don't have claps. Don't have claps. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just. <laughs> my mom came to visit for the weekend she's on spring break shout out to the teachers uh she's in she's in the corner <laughs> I, can, I can see her ever so slightly because my shades make it even darker <laughs> yeah, she's like in the shadows she's just in the shadows but these are her glasses she let me borrow them so that you guys didn't have to look at my sty um but yeah so it's not just a fashion statement no mm -hmm. but that's how i've been how have you been I have been good today. I showered with a bucket. Oh. <laughs> Why did it? Mexico. Yeah, Mexico. yeah, yeah. Um, I went to go get a haircut. And then like literally when I came back, my mom saw like, there's no hot water. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> like I, everything's itchy. Like I, I need a shower. Uh -huh. And then she's like, well, I can boil some water for you. So I, I did that. And it was, mm. it was very stimulating to my brain, to shower. which says a lot about my brain. <laughs> but, <laughs> Cause like, I, like, I feel like shower. I, I don't know if this is for you, mm. like this for you, but when I'm shower, I, when I shower, I feel like it's such like passive yeah. activity. Mindless. It's kind of like, yeah. Like, autopilot mm -hmm. and this time I had to be like okay I gotta make sure I don't run out of water okay mm -hmm. what am I gonna wash first okay well I should do this I ha also have like when you get a haircut there's so many little hairs so like having to get that out yeah I was like, okay it was like a lot of things but I enjoyed it I was mm. like my brain this <laughs> this is the solution to like low attention span and TikTok <laughs> shower, shower with, with a bucket, bucket. Wow. <laughs> but that was my journey oh my gosh wait so how big was the bucket it was a home depot bucket but i was like using mm, little whoosh, whoosh, like a little like a cup it. yeah oh yeah, i yeah. see <gasps> how fun a little rubber dub time yeah <laughs> but, <laughs> but our, now that you've cut your hair how often do you cut your hair now a month i try to do it every month mm. um funnily enough the f when i when i got the other haircut it was the first of march and I was like, oh, I should probably get it the first of April. And then I just lagged. So um, I got it today. April but. Fools. <laughs> <laughs> they give you like a buzz cut. <laughs> April oh, Fools. <laughs> no, it's my fear. I used to get those a lot when I was a kid in elementary. Mm -hmm. I hated it. I was like, I want my hair different. And my parents were like, no, you're going to get a buzz cut. And I was like, no. Nah. They didn't let you do the moco de gorilla. Mo well, it's because like, I guess I would get a haircut every couple of months because it would get pretty long. Oh, I see. And then... Like whenever I was time to get a haircut, it was like start all over. <laughs> start all over. I had a lot of friends. Yeah. They were just one day luscious locks, the next day bald. I <laughs> wanted to like, rock a fade in fucking third grade. No tape for fade. <laughs> anyways, enough of haircut. And of haircut hair trauma. Haircut trauma. <laughs> Damn. Do you have anything else for catching up? Um. Yes, which is like also for you. <gasps> The Beyonce album. Cowboy Carter. Just dropped. Not just dropped. It dropped. It dropped a while ago, <laughs> but. The first time we can talk about it. Yeah, this is the first time we can talk about it because the first time we're recording a pod in a very long time. But oh. <laughs> Cowboy Carter mm -hmm. <laughs> was released what, last week. 
Mm, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Well, anyway, I have been listening to it every single day. Nice. Since it dropped. Since nice. it dropped. Nice. The chill cold it has on me. I don't know what it is. I, wh- I listened to it on my way home. I drove back to the Bay and I was with my little sister and I made her listen, it, listen to it with me. And like, we were just like, okay, okay. Like at first we were just kind of like, okay, like cool. And then like, I liked it. It was cool. And then I listened to it a second time and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. This is this is art. <laughs> this is really good. Yeah. I, I, um, I know you were very like weary about it cause it was a country album. Mm-hmm. Um, or it's a, it's a Beyonce album as she says. <laughs> but, uh, the first time I listened to it, I was driving to set. I listened to like half of it mm-hmm. and I was like, it's like such an experience to listen to it. And, and like, sh- that's, I mean, that's what she set out to do is like, mm-hmm. this is going to be such a, a project that is like, like it doesn't really have a, a genre, which is like mm-hmm. a huge point of, of the album is like being drawn to lists and like not being felt like you're gonna um, like confined to mm-hmm. something. So I really enjoyed it I did. as I, well. I made my mom listen to it twice. Shout out mom. <laughs> 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 we listened to it two times already. <laughs> what were your favorite songs? Oh my gosh. I I loved the, the second I heard Bodyguard. I was like, this is going to be my mm-hmm. favorite song. I love that one. The second me, when me and my little sister heard Yaya. Oh, my <laughs> God. Like we were. It we, came with a warning. That and, song. No, for real, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, and that's what makes it a unique listening experience. <laughs> yes, yeah. it does. Um, and like my little sister was literally in the car and we were just like, like hitting the, the roof of the car. We were just so excited about it. Um, and then. Uh, the first time I heard daughter, I was like, oh my God, this is really good. Yeah. And then I listened to it over yeah. and over and over again. I was like, oh my God. The, the, um, the opera. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Incredible. She ate. Yeah. Very, very good. Do you have favorites? Yeah. I, I like the ones that, yeah, everyone's liking, um, bodyguard and, um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I also really like the one with Miley Cyrus, uh, <gasps> two most wanted. Mm-hmm. Their voices just beautifully like, ah, uh, they, mm-hmm. they're like, they complement each other so well. So the first time I heard that one and then also Levi's jeans with Post Malone, and I think Posty. Post Malone does a great job in that as well. Um, Be a sexy little thing. <laughs> his little twang. In his yeah. voice. Uh, Daughter's also really good. And good. um I really liked uh, 16 Carriages too. Oh yeah, that one was really yeah. good. That was the single that was released before. Yeah, him, right? yeah. Very, very good. But yeah, this whole album is, is really good. And the, f- the first and last track make me like cry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give me like goosebumps. I'm like, oh, so good. So if you have not listened to Cowboy Carter, please go listen to Cowboy Carter. I if. think it's, it's, you don't even have to be a Beyonce fan, I think, to enjoy it. I think it's just yes. very good. You don't have to be a country fan. You don't have to be a Beyonce fan. She really makes it. She really makes country her own. And she does it in her own way. And it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And the lyrics are really good. If you mm-hmm. listen to the lyrics, I'm like, oh, damn. Yeah. Get them, Beyonce. Beautiful. Yeah, that's our spiel. Yeah, anything Cowboy else Carter. about Car- Cowboy Carter? Cowboy Carter. It feels like taking a sip of your favorite warm beverage at the perfect temperature <laughs> where you don't like burn yourself or mm-hmm. nothing. That's what that album feels like. Yeah, I would I would recommend to try to listen to it with like the best headphones that you can, best speakers that you can. Um, if you're If you're using Bluetooth like headphones and you have wired ones, use the wired ones instead, I think. Because like mm-hmm. the Bluetooth ones ruin the quality, but I think this album is just so crisp. <laughs> it's so crisp, but so well produced. So yes. and listen to it in order. Don't you dare his shuffle. Yeah, <laughs> Don't definitely. Don't you dare his shuffle. It tells the whole story. So very good. That's our spiel. That was like a ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, she broke so many records. It, it like doubled the uh, doubled the listens of of Renaissance. Really, which I think goes to show the impact of Beyonce, but also just the impact I think of Renaissance. Because I feel like Renaissance was like my introduction not my introduction to Beyonce but like listening mm-hmm. to like an album of hers and being yeah. excited for the next one to come out mm-hmm. so I think my friend Michael also was like I like I like he heard Renaissance and was like really excited for this album to come out and then mm-hmm. it came out he's like it's beautiful so it's I think that was a, a common experience so. yeah no because I listened to a lot of Beyonce when I was little and then I didn't listen to a lot of, like of her stuff when we were like getting older but then Renaissance is when I came back yeah. and I was just like wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> she eats 
<laughs> one last thing. I'm sorry. There's just so much to say. Um, <laughs> shout out to all the other black country artists on the album who are getting a lot more exposure because of it. Beyonce, your impact is insane. I was listening to another podcast about um, that the black country community was very excited for this to drop because they were finally going to be taken serious, especially black women be mm-hmm. taken serious in this genre. So shout out, man. She's mm-hmm. doing everything. Mm-hmm. So good. So good. <gasps> okay. Anyways, moving uh, along. Moving on. <laughs> um, next thing is is today we're filming this on Monday, April eighth, mm-hmm. which is um, when the eclipse happened. Oh yeah. yeah. What was your experience? I was at like? work. <laughs> 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 I was at work, but I was near the window when it because it started happening like around eleven, right? Mm-hmm. So I was near the window and I was just like, oh, like I could tell it's happening because it looks like incorrect outside like it looks like muted yeah like, it lo- yeah like it just looked like <laughs> like turn the brightness yeah. up. like literally like if you're working on a video editing a video or like a like picture turn like the brightness turn the brightness up. up or like if you go on your phone you you put it on like night mode and yeah. it like changes like the tint like that's what it looked like so it was just like oh it looks wrong <laughs> or whatever <laughs> and so we didn't have any of the glasses which oh, we were so sad damn. we were just like damn we should have got the glasses um so my coworker, you guys didn't make any pinhole cameras we tried. <laughs> At the photo lab. My <laughs> <laughs> At the photo lab, you guys couldn't make a pinhole camera. <laughs> we tried. We tried. And then my cork was, she came back in after testing it out. And she looks at me. She goes, I almost blinded myself. <laughs> We're not supposed to look at it. <laughs> you have to look through it. Yeah, and looking, looking through it. No. What do you mean? It, it cast a shadow. Girl, I don't know. Actually, <laughs> I, w- I wasn't outside. She, she just walked in. <laughs> She took one for the team. She walked in. But because uh, my coworker was telling us about the shadow thing, which I didn't know because I never paid attention to this <laughs> when we were little. Um, but he was just like, oh, if you look in the shadows of the floor, if something like circular, mm-hmm. then it shows the moon. And we had like a post that had like a bunch of holes on it mm-hmm. and it was casting a shadow and it was just all little moons yeah. on the floor. And it looks so cool. Nice. Okay. Well, you I did like, get yeah, to experience I it. I did then. get yeah, to experience cool. it. Yeah. I also learned that like doing your hands like this, mm-hmm. like it creates a circle and then you can see it. What? Um, I had glasses from 2017 and then I read on the glasses, it said, uh, throw away after three years. I looked at the sun <laughs> <laughs> and I was fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. He's <laughs> like, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> That's actually why I'm wearing my glasses, guys. I took, I looked at the sun for too long. But it was cool. It was just like halfway. But mm. I, I think I would love to, I, I didn't have any money this time, but the next one is going to be in 2040, 2044, if I'm not, I'm not 2044? Mistaken. Yeah. We're going to be 43. <laughs> yeah. I want to travel. I want to make the trip to, to an Airbnb and, and go it. like through the actual path <gasps> where, where it actually blocks it all out. Yeah, that because that's I, on my bucket list. I don't have a bucket list, but that's that's my first thing on there. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> yeah. He said he showered with the bucket. Now he has a bucket <laughs> list. <laughs> he's, a, he's a changed man. Mm-hmm. No, because I didn't know. I did. Oh my god, this is gonna sound like I don't know anything, <laughs> which is kind of true. But <laughs> like, I didn't know that there was like a path. I thought that we would all just like see it. I'm just like, I, I thought think... that we would all vibe together, like worldwide, <laughs> like worldwide, like kumbaya. Yeah, kumbaya. Like, <laughs> Holding hands, experiencing this thing with each other. No, but even like the parts that like like LA or like like uh, Northern California or like these other places didn't really see it, but um, it was still really cool to see everybody just like this is one of those moments where it's like humans. Yeah, human core. Like peace, world peace, <laughs> world please. Peace. Like this is what it could be like all the time <laughs> if we if we just stop fighting. If we went outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's like it was i was like seeing like live streams or like uh the news was like in mexico because mazatlan was like one of the places mm-hmm. where it was like the best place to to watch it um and uh, i almost cried i was like everybody's so excited about this thing that like we can't control it's just here and i was like oh <laughs> it's too good did you see the the nasa scientists uh in mazatlan they're all like, I haven't <laughs> been online since today. <laughs> There's these like white NASA scientists and they're just like hella dancing to banda and shit. And they're all like, they took their opportunity to take a pay trip <laughs> to and Mexico they and they took it. That's so funny. But they're having a grand good time. Good for them. Good for them. Good for the sun. Good for the moon. Yeah. Good but job, guys. Did you <laughs> appreciate it while we have a moon? <laughs> oh, grew. <laughs> <laughs> grew from Despicable Me is coming. <laughs> I'm gonna steal it. Uh, but did you feel strange after? Um, like sick? 
No. <laughs> yeah, you said it. <laughs> no, because me and my coworker, like only me and one of my coworkers, we were like, we feel kind of like sick right now, like nauseous, like lightheaded. And like we were just like he like he came in and he was just like, I don't feel so well right now. And I was just like, me too. But I didn't want to say anything because I thought it was crazy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then our other coworker was fine. She was fine. And then we were I just like, oh, the moon is tripping us up. <laughs> I was fine, but I tried to send a couple of texts and they weren't going through. And I was like, <gasps> What's going on? Damn. But they went through. Oh. After after like the totality thing happened. Oh, shoot. Well, if anybody else felt nauseous, well, let us know. <laughs> social experiment is going on <laughs> because he said he was texting his friend too, and she was also like, "I feel strange right now. Like I feel nauseous or like like not sick, but like not normal type of thing." Mm, I was feeling euphoric. <laughs> he I was, was like, feeling. I he was, was crying <laughs> for. <laughs> I was thinking about world peace. <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> anyway, of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything else about the clips? Mm, no, the memes are always funny when things <laughs> yeah. like this happen. But yeah, very good. Mm. Okay, <laughs> Talk, talking about memes. Internet corner. Internet corner. <laughs> 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 Laughter. That's how we're gonna be. Um, I don't know where to start. I feel like. I have three of these. Maybe I'll start with kind of not a boring one, but a little bit of a boring one. Mm -hmm. Remember when I was talking to you about um, how Kendrick Lamar dissed J. Cole and Drake in a song? Yes, a little bit. Yeah, Mm because like those three, Kendrick, J. Cole and Drake are like top three rappers or whatever. Mm. And he's like, nah, they're not up here. It's just me. Kendrick said that. And then a couple of weeks after... Or actually, this past Friday, J. Cole dropped a, a song kind of firing back at Ooh, Kendrick. Uh-huh. And he's just like, oh, your albums are so weak. It was a whack diss. Uh-oh. Diss, uh, Uh-oh. diss. There was also like touches of transphobia on there because he used transgender in, in, a, in a bar. Um, mm-hmm. So it was interesting. And then he like literally last night, he apologized. He's like... Like not even like just for the transgender stuff, but just like, man, it felt like so so weird to be mean. Like like Kendrick, let's come together. Me, me, me when I try to be mean and I can't. Find- <laughs> and everybody was just like, "That's so lame, dude!" Like you 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 fired shots back and then you're all like, "Wait Never a minute, mind. wait a minute, guys! I didn't mean it." <laughs> I mean, when I can't stand my ground. <laughs> but also, I feel like. It's different when you're in the rapping game. You oh, gotta yeah, like. You gotta like <laughs> there's a whole persona that you yeah. gotta like do. That's kind of funny though. The way that he, he was took just it like, back. It was the eclipse. Kumbaya. <laughs> <laughs> it was the eclipse. He wanted to be clean before he went into the eclipse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing on his conscience. Oh my gosh. I just thought it was really funny. I, I was hearing a little bit about that, but I didn't look too far into it. Yeah, he he dropped it, and then after three days, he was like. I can't take the pressure. Like, guys, actually, <laughs> I didn't mean it. <laughs> After going through, like, how long do you have to sit on something? Like, because you know how, like, when people are like, if you're feel like you're going to be mad and make a bad decision to, like, wait I 10 see. seconds. And, I like, see, I see, I like, see. Like, see how you feel about it. And then if you still feel about it, like, say it. And, but he was, like, sitting on that for a, a minute. If he had to write the lyric, he had to feel the feelings, write the lyrics. <laughs> Uh, record the, the the music, mix it, yeah, <laughs> mix it. yeah and then drop it. And then he was just like, "Actually, guys, yeah. I lied." <laughs> and I, I I heard that he was taking it off Spotify, so Damn. we'll see. But I was like, "That that's that's funny." Wow, that's crazy for all our rap fans out there, <laughs> hip hop heads, hip hop heads. <laughs> now we're gonna do a complete one eighty and talk about JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> The other end of the spectrum. Of if you don't know who Jojo Siwa is, <laughs> it, what do you know about Jojo Siwa? Her lore that she was in Dance Moms and she was that girl that was she was like a children's like uh, singer like sing would make songs for kids mm-hmm. and she was very like colorful and like unicorn kid focused yeah kid focused and then she came out uh, as a lesbian I think and she was just like yeah la 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 and then now she's like transitioning into young adulthood. Perfect. Yeah. I think I think you knew a little bit more about the early lore than I did. Uh-huh. I just found out today that she was in Dance Moms. Really? Yeah. I didn't, I thought she was just like. But you've never heard the the audio of Abby Lee Miller going, Jojo, have you learned nothing? No, <laughs> no I don't even know that. who Abby Lee Miller is. If I'm being honest. 
<laughs> I'm over here gonna be educating you on Jojo Siwa, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> what is the joke, Joe? So that was good setting it up. Mm-hmm. Um, she has made a lot of money, a lot of money selling things to kids, mm-hmm. um, like selling ribbons or not ribbons, like bows. Mm-hmm. Like that's her main income earner <laughs> is bows. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yeah, she, she came out as 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 lesbian, mm-hmm. I believe. Which um, was obviously when she's catering to kids was like a big deal. Yeah, yeah. So everybody was like supporting JoJo. Like yeah, let, you 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 get it, JoJo. Go JoJo. Um, I was one of them. <laughs> yeah, and, and then <laughs> and then um, I think her her girlfriend uh, was like a Trump supporter, mm-hmm. and then that came out. Um, and then I think she she if. I might be spending most false information here. Fact check this. <laughs> I believe she cheated on her girlfriend. And I don't know. she just also hangs out with like Colleen Bellinger and James Charles, who are like known predatory mm-hmm. online people. So she like still supports them and still hangs out with them. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that. Uh, and recently she's been wanting to go through a little bit of a... A rebrand. A rebrand. <laughs> she wants to change her image. Um, what was the first kind of stuff that you saw when you <laughs> wanted this, when she when she was going through this rebrand? The, my introduction to the rebrand was the video that she made where her phone's kind of like on the floor and she's mm-hmm. like backing it. She's like in that punk Random outfit. having a phone call. And just like... <laughs> Oh no, I, no, I forgot no. who showed me that. I forgot who showed me that. But I. Not that one? <laughs> well, I did see that one first, actually, now that you're talking about it. But I forgot who showed me that one. I think, was it you, Milena? It was Milena who showed me that one. <laughs> and I was scared. I was. I started trembling. <laughs> My teeth started shattering. I was like, no, no, get it away. Um, but in terms of like her rebrand for her music, the first thing I saw was that video where like her phone's kind of on the floor and she backs up. She's like in that punk with the, with the makeup. <laughs> and everybody was she saying, even get to the <laughs> sentence. everybody was saying, damn, can't wait for Fortnite to make this in a mo. <laughs> it was just her like, <laughs> <laughs> like that, and, <laughs> and and then people started comparing her to Barb from Trolls. <laughs> They're just like Poppy. Don't say, it, don't kill all music. That one lesbian bitch from Trolls, <laughs> and it was Jojo Siwa. <laughs> <laughs> that was my introduction to that. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> what would you classify her her rebrand in in the lesbian community as? God, I don't know. <laughs> or like <laughs> what like when she made when she was she's when she was going through that rebrand, like that first video that I saw oh, that we saw. When she was like being yeah. hey mamas. Well, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I just wanted to just <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I can't say it, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, because like <laughs> I feel like she was going down that path and then like she became like this like like what kids think rock and roll is. I guess what rock and roll was. Oh, I see. Like kiss. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. I saw her I saw okay. <laughs> when Jojo Siwa first came out, I was really excited for her because there wasn't a lot of representation for children. So yeah. I was just like, I was like, oh, thinking about the kids. Like, oh my God, they're going to see somebody that they look up to being so confident in their sexuality. And then little by little, she started to be a little bit problematic. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, uh oh. Um, and then I feel like when she stopped wearing the ponytail is when everybody like in the, in the lesbian community was just like, oh, the Hey Mamas is for me. <laughs> like she's, she's slow getting there um but yeah and then i saw that video of her like putting her mm-hmm. <laughs> hand on the and it wasn't even bad it was just the way that everybody was like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah um, i think that was the first time like the public saw her starting to make the the to rebrand yeah um but anyway she has a new song come out that came out um it's called karma <laughs> um <laughs> She's acting like it's the most edgy thing ever. She says the word B I C T H. Thank you. Huh? Wait, B I C T H. Wait, that's a meme. <laughs> <laughs> I did not even question it for a second. Dude. I was just like, yeah, thank you yeah, for spelling it out. <laughs> <laughs> no one got it. Anyway. B- I was like, guys, guys, guys. <laughs> I'm literate. No, I'm not. <clears throat> I trusted you. <laughs> no, you were like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. B I C T H. 
she says that that's the only like curse word that she says. And then she says, um, if you F around or something, she can't even say <laughs> fuck. Yeah. <laughs> she can't even say. <laughs> um, let's see. I, okay. This is, this is another thing that I want to say. There's a lot of interviews and I think the interviews are, are really like, um, shredding her apart or, tr- or tearing her apart. <laughs> it's her downfall. Um, she said that she wanted to invent a new genre mm-hmm. <laughs> called gay club pop. Gay club pop? Can she even go to the club? Is she even old enough? Well, like that's not even the thing. I f- isn't that already? <laughs> no way. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> can she legally go to the club? Actually, Jojo, uh, you can't go to the club. So <laughs> making music that you can't even hear, silly, <laughs> silly girl. <laughs> A lot of people are pointing out that that like there's other people who have already. Yeah, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> and who like? She's acting like she's she's <laughs> trailblazing in that in that area. Oh, Jojo, Jojo, <laughs> Jojo, Jojo. I saw this other one that was like, um, Jojo thinks that, like she's like the first lesbian. <laughs> Just like how like she's she's talking about it, but yeah, I've been seeing a lot of things about her, but I honestly just scroll past it just because I'm like, I yeah, I don't keep up with it. <laughs> to be fair, I there is something like that grabs my attention. And it's JoJo Siwa. A guilty pleasure. No, just like yeah, she also said that all the haters, it's a guilty pleasure, which maybe. I haven't heard the full song, but um, I just want to I just want to see how her brain works, which is why I watched all the interviews and videos, <laughs> if that makes sense, because sometimes she says stuff where I'm like, where are the gears turning here? Yeah, I've, I've seen that stuff where people are just like, she acts like she's confident, but that's, that's cockiness. Like you're just acting cocky. It's yeah. just like, oh shit. But anyway, um, also we have nothing against Hey Mama's Lesbians at all. <laughs> I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I said anything. No, I know, I know, because yeah, well, JoJo's just, I think, should I say it? Should I say it? She's a white gay. Hmm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Actually, guys, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean <laughs> no, but I think, you know, like you get like Noah Schnapp and like mm. just like very like, although, yes, that's fair. You, you do identify with this one part of your identity that is that has been like marginalized and stuff. It still doesn't overshadow or doesn't excuse the, your behavior that comes from all of your other that's fair. Like. <laughs> and, and I feel like that's where that criticism comes from of like her feeling like she's a trailblazer in this yeah, area where there's not. been like other women of color, yeah, people of color who have... Yeah, club pop. Is that what she said? Yeah. That's like not... <laughs> it's like uh, it's a genre that's been established like by Beyonce. non-white people. Yeah. <laughs> and then just like, bruh. So. She is just... She's so silly. Anyway. Yeah. Anyways, uh, one more thing. Afraid in a corner. Um... I have been on this site of TikTok called Foo News Network. Foo News? Like Foo, Foo? News <laughs> Network. Foo. Foo. I bet my dad's on that too. <laughs> it's this guy in um, Southern California and he talks like this and he like kind of has like the, the Fox News logo, but it says Foo News <laughs> Network. <laughs> and he has this mic that's bedazzled and he's just like hella in random places like covering like I saw one where he was literally at the site of like the end of a police pursuit and he's like food news network here on the site and like the police are like right in front of him like pointing the gun at the guy who's driving and he's just like fuck you he's like blah 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 to to the to the driver he's like you could have killed someone or whatever and he's just like food news network here on the (laughs) site or he's just like if he sees someone on the freeway like Uh like in the middle of the like on on the on the shoulders he just stops and he's like hey guys what happened here (laughs) (laughs) Like that's most of his content. Like on the freeway, he's like, "Hey guys, like, what happened here?" It's like, "Oh, we just like had a little fender bender." Oh, okay, we'll stay safe. <laughs> just stuff like that. It's that's so funny, funny. bro. It's so funny. Let's get him on the pod. <laughs> he brings his own microphone. Yeah, no, it's like low key. I don't even think the microphone works. It's just like bedazzled and oh. it, it's beautiful. But I, I, I've enjoyed it. He's like mostly also just like in. He's sometimes in LA, but he's like kind of like in the valley like Pomona like, I see. like kind of the, the Inland Empire but 
It's funny. I enjoy what his content. Here? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta start watching that. I gotta start tuning in. But everyone's just like so nice about it. Everybody's like, oh hey, like yeah, well you like <laughs> just being so happy to see him. I feel like I would be if he came at me at a time of stress, if I'm on the shoulder of the freeway, first of all, I'm embarrassed. I'm like, because everybody <laughs> could just see me. Like that's the thing though. Like I feel like people are like in embarrassing situations, but they're so nice to him because uh, it's just I like see. Great vibes. Great vibes. Yeah. Period. <laughs> Period. Shout out to what is it? Foo News. Foo News Network Foo on News site. Foo News yeah. on site. Look, look him up on Instagram or on TikTok. Um, help this foo out. You know, <laughs> Latino <laughs> artist <laughs> recommendation. Who's helping out foos? <laughs> foos helping out foos. Anyways, um, before we move on to the chorizo con huevo of the, of the <laughs> episode, um, let me go ahead and do some real quick housekeeping. If you're watching on a podcast platform, go ahead and give us a rating and a review. We would appreciate it so much. And if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and give us a like, comment, and subscribe. I know we said we were kind of like taking it easy, but you guys should still like, comment, and subscribe to get informed when we do drop an episode. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys don't do any of that, go ahead and follow us on our social media at Hand Me Down Pod on TikTok and on Instagram. If you miss an episode, we post the best clips on there. Again, that social media is at Hand Me Down Pod stay tuned for updates you know if we're dropping a new episode you want to know and the best place to know is loki instagram <laughs> <laughs> so, hey loki instagram <laughs> instagram um <laughs> and with that being said let's get back into the episode thank you guys for listening Woo! <clears throat> we're quitting because you guys didn't leave any reviews <laughs> <laughs> any comments, <laughs> any no, I'm just comments. Kidding. <laughs> we're just kidding we're just kidding Alrighty, so as Alan said, the chorizo con huevo of the episode is going to be us talking about movies that got us into filmmaking, as we have both talked about a lot on this podcast. It's something that, it's a, it's a passion that we're trying to turn into our career, <laughs> for being quite <laughs> mm -hmm. honest. Um, but, you know, before our we had to f come face to face with the realities of the American economy <laughs> and <laughs> slaving away to corporate America. We were once little children with dreams and well, we're going to talk about this. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, with this conversation, I, with this conversation, I kind of <laughs> wanted to start with, um, was there anything before like watching a movie that was like, Oh, I want to go into filmmaking or like, was there anything t ten like related that like looking back at it now you're like oh maybe that's why filmmaking was like a good outlet or maybe that's why I was like drawn to it. I when I was little I loved to read. I love I was reading Junie B Jones. Shout out to my girl Junie B. The B stands for Beatrice. <laughs> uh, in first grade, so like chapter books in like first grade, mm -hmm. and I would read a lot. Um, I love a good chapter I was, book. <laughs> I read a lot. And you know why I read a lot? Because I was obsessed with the movie Matilda. And I used to think that it was real. Like, it, because she read a lot, she uh, got power. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, stop lying. You just wanted to meet Miss Honey. You're stop. like, if I read enough books, I will meet Miss Honey. I would meet Miss Honey. Miss honey. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a meme is honey. No, but I remember being so little and being so like I believed it so much. Like if I read enough books, I will have superpowers and I could like do Maybe a whole that's bunch why of I don't things. like reading. I should have watched Matilda <laughs> you like watch first. Matilda. Um and then you know, like growing up watching Reading Rainbow <laughs> and stuff. Mm -hmm. and so I would read a lot and after I started reading a lot, I started writing a lot and I would love to write. Um I I wrote a lot of like narrative pieces. I mean, I read a lot of intellectual narrative <laughs> pieces in the third grade <laughs> where I would just write stories about like things that me and my cousins would do. And then I would just write them in like first person and just nice. like, so I just really liked writing, I think was like my first telling stories. Yeah. Like drawn to, to being a storyteller, I think. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? That's so interesting. Um, well, I, I, I'll get to why that reminded me of something but um i feel like i've just always more than anything i think is like entertainment um like since i was a kid i was always mm -hmm. trying to be entertaining and like whether it was music which that is something i never stuck with <laughs> whether it was music <laughs> just playing like random instruments or mm -hmm. just banging pots and pans or um just trying to do creative stuff all the time um and i think now to that i guess my my books were toys <laughs> was playing because i feel like that's where i would 
tell stories. Yeah, which is like with, with toys. Yeah, and like always be telling like these storylines. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, at a sort of certain point, I got too old to start to be playing with toys. So I was like, well, what's the next best <laughs> thing? Well, I guess I'll have to like write stuff down and like actually get people to be these toys <laughs> <laughs> and Big. act out what I'm thinking in my head. Um, so that's kind of it. Um, but honestly, a lot of it was, was going to Universal Studios um, my first time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think up until that point, I, I never realized that any of this stuff could be a career or that, like people could make money off of this because just... I never saw that. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't see a lot of people who look like me or a lot of people from my community who went into filmmaking or went into entertainment or pursued this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just like, like literally going on the studio tour and being like seeing the behind the scenes. I'm like, people do this. <laughs> yeah. like, and they probably get paid really well uh, at, at some point. <laughs> yeah. um, so that was kind of it too, where I was like, okay, cool. Um, and yeah, and then that that got me into into some of the movies. So, damn, yeah, that's. Fu- I feel like I was not. At least I don't remember being a super imaginative child in the ways where I would constantly be itching to play or like or like come up with a storyline type of thing. Yeah, but then I don't know. I don't remember that. I'm trying to remember when I got into like video making. Which was also <laughs> elementary school, I think. I feel like I use my imagination a lot. Like I remember, I have this memory of me. I was just like spinning, and like <laughs> I, <laughs> like 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 spinning around, but like I could see, like I was imagining that I was like in a, a different scenario, or like I'd be on the floor pretending that like the floor was like going like this. And I was like <laughs> trying to, yeah, like literally like trying, like I don't know, just like. Yeah, I guess I, I guess kind of yeah. I used to pretend I could blue skidoo into books, and it was always yeah, like it always brings like us back. <laughs> <laughs> always brings us back to books. <laughs> it's because shout out to my mom. She had uh, like giant bookcases in our house, and mm-hmm. there were like a whole bunch of books and stuff, and so we would be able to read. Um, a lot of picture books, as you said, I like this, I like this book. It's got a lot of <laughs> pictures in it. And I guess, yeah, when I was little, now that I think about it, I would grab the book with the most pictures and just make up the story by myself before I knew how to read. Yeah. And just like yeah. Figure that out. But yeah, shout out to books. I should read more. I feel like I'm very illiterate now because I don't <laughs> read. I, I don't know. practice. I gotta read, I gotta read more too. Mm-hmm. I've been meaning to get a book. <laughs> I have books, but I, all the ones that I have, I've, I've read already. So I'm like, I need to get a new one. I have zero books and I have not read them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we will. New era. Now that, now that we're taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> I know. More time to read. Um, well, yeah. Do, do you have any, any movie that comes to mind? <laughs> I mean, you guys know this one. <laughs> the movie that got me into filmmaking is a movie shocker based on a book. <laughs> And the movie was Diary of a Wimpy Kid. <laughs> <laughs> My mom in the back was like, we had the whole series. I in Spanish. A- wow. In Spanish, Diario de Greg is what it was called. They didn't insult him in Spanish. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't call him wimpy. They didn't call him a wimpy kid. They just called him <laughs> Greg. <laughs> but I was obsessed with those books when I was younger. So was I. I really, I had like, I think up till eight. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Blue. I because there was like a break that he stopped releasing books, mm. and then he like picked up. I like stopped like after that break. Probably but, same, yeah. yeah. But um, I think they were making a movie about it, and then my my parents were just like, "Oh, she really likes this book." Like, um, hey, guess what? They're making a movie about it, and they released a making of book. Like, it was called Diary of Wimpy Kid: The Movie Diary, and it's a white book. <laughs> Cute. I remember and that. I had a friend who had it and I was like, let me see it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was gifted that book and I was just like, oh, how cool. And then I was just like, <laughs> like all the behind the scenes and like just like hearing about the lore of how they casted the guy that plays Greg and how they casted uh, Rowley. Perfect and just like, casting, by Yeah, the way. just like everything just like everything that went into making that movie and i was just like this is incredible i love this i loved that movie when it came out i watched it over and over again um and so time wimpy kid is literally what got me into filmmaking i think that was my quote-unquote studio tour because i mean like you lived out here in in southern california i lived in northern california so i never thought about that being a career option really not even when i when i was in high school 
Um, but yeah, it was Nightmare Begins. Nice. <laughs> that was nice. my first movie. What was yours? Well, but before that, I think Jeff Kenny's is that his name? I think Jeff Kinney. Jeff Kinney. There we Kinney? go. Jeff Kinney's impact should be studied because I feel like he kind of had the same sort of the same impact as uh, J.K. Rowling with with the Harry Potter books where like Harry Potter's known as like um, those books got a generation of kids to read. Mm. And I feel like <laughs> to maybe a little bit of a lesser extent, uh, Jeff Kinney got a generation of kids to, no, to read. And, then, and, and now like the movies are also kind of yeah, like huge. The and movies are really Not big. as huge as Harry Potter, obviously, because Harry Potter is like crazy. And, mm-hmm. like, you can do a lot of stuff with it. But where is a diary of a wimpy kid land? Universal Studios. When is that going to be a thing? When is that going to be a thing? <laughs> Please, I will show up. Let me touch the cheese. <laughs> let, me, let me touch the cheese. Three hours in line. <laughs> touch the cheese. cheese. Good God, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to touch the cheese. I want to uh, find Manny's tingy or whatever he calls it. <laughs> <laughs> see, see the Wizard of Oz play? The, the show? It's a show. <laughs> 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 Jerry Glenn. such a good movie such a good movie and then I handed down those books to my mom's co-worker's son mm-hmm. and he gave me a, a gift card as a thank you he was Aww. so sweet <laughs> beautiful shout out to him their impact um, <laughs> for me um, I think since that like kind of spark was set in me at Universal Studios a lot of Universal Studios movies um are very like have a very special place in my heart i'm thinking of like back to the future which is my one of my favorite movies and um jurassic park um and i think what i really liked about those is those are so imaginative Mm -hmm. as much as like i feel like recently in the stuff that i've kind of wanted to tell it's a little bit more drama and kind of like real stuff um i think my my love for it became came came from like adventure movies where mm. it's like time travel or like dinosaurs are real, like, like kind of these concepts that you explore. Um, and they're just really fun to watch. Mm. I think, um, I haven't watched both of these in, in a while and I should, I have them on, on Blu-ray. Maybe I'll do that tonight. Mm. Um, but I remember like knowing whole scenes from back to the future. Like that's how much I used to watch it and like Jurassic park and, um, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of maybe an earlier one, but I, I don't know if I if I have one. Do you have any other ones? Mm, I feel it. <laughs> Monsters Inc. <laughs> Monsters uh-huh. Inc. I feel like Monsters Inc. was the first like script that I really liked, um, mm. and I mean. Like, <laughs> I memorized the first scene because it was so <laughs> good. Your and party it's, trick. It's yeah. literally is my party trick is I know how to recite that scene like from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the first one that I um, really like, really enjoyed the script. I really enjoyed the story. Uh, cried a lot in that movie. I remember it came out the year we were born, yeah. but you know, I still grew up watching it and it like lived in my mom's Honda Odyssey. <laughs> and then my sister would wear this perfume um, throughout that era of her life. So every time I smell that perfume, if I ever smell it, because it's such an outdated scent, but like, if I ever smell it, I'm like, <laughs> like, and that's what I like associated with. But now, now that I think about it, a lot of animated movies, Cause then like Prince, Prince of Egypt, DreamWorks Prince of Egypt. I love that movie growing yes. up. I would watch it so much. And you didn't go into an animation? No, I didn't. Because? I don't know. Are you a good drawer? I forget no. if you're a good drawer. Okay, maybe that's <laughs> I why. I cannot draw to save my <laughs> life. I cannot draw to save my life. <laughs> maybe that's why. Yeah. So, but I mean, I love the comedy and the charm, I think, of animation movies. I guess like really like family or kids movies is what I really like. So I guess like a lot of times people are like, have you watched that really high brown movie? And I'm like, no, but I watched <laughs> Over the Head. <laughs> like, no. That's but, fair. Yeah, I do. I love a good charming movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, I, I, also when you're when you're younger and like going through this, of oh. course, it's going to be those movies that impact you. Um, I'm thinking of the movie Real Steel. In the robot movie? It. Yeah. I've not seen it. A lot of movies that were on FX or like <laughs> Grown Ups, <laughs> comfort movie. Um, but yeah, I think me was like more live action. I think that's kind of what I wanted to do as much as I do love animation. I think 
watching more of the um of the live action stuff i was like this is i want to be behind a camera mm-hmm. i want to be in front of a camera <laughs> um and really like that's when that's when Okay, so I think the first time I went to Universal Studios might have been 2010. Mm-hmm. And then, like, one of the earliest videos I can find of, like, me working towards it is 2012. Damn. Um, so, like, that really set the fire. Oh, my God, I can't believe I, I didn't mention this. Another thing um, was this YouTube channel called um, Indie Mogul. Oh yeah, Indie Mogul. Indie Mogul. And I just stumbled across their YouTube and they would just show you how to do special effects for like very cheap. Mm. So they would like try to recreate something from a popular movie or from a popular show. Mm-hmm. And they would show you how to do it. And I think I just I just really like watching them build stuff and then l- like have it have them use it. Mm. Um and they would make like a little tiny short film at the end, like two minutes, showcasing off the effect that they did. Mm. And I guess that was kind of like my diary of Wimpy Kid of also like seeing the behind the scenes yeah. of like, okay, this is how you make a prop. And like the, the prop mm-hmm. is like used for this. So that, and they would always just like kind of like have like indie filmmaking tips and stuff like that. So like yeah. that was kind of my start also. That was probably like around 2010. Like all that stuff kind of happened at the same time. Yeah. Uh, YouTube. The yeah. YouTube era. Yeah. Shout out YouTube. I think without YouTube. Shout out <laughs> Film Riot. Shout, Shout out, out DSLR, DSLR guy. guy. <laughs> Shout out who else? <laughs> Cinecom.net. Did you ever watch uh, D for Darius? I did. <laughs> Shout out D for Darius. Shout, Shout out, out all you guys. Um, <laughs> we were just kids with a camera and a dream. And no money. And no money. <laughs> no money. Like literally, I remember searching budget gear mm. and it was like, oh, this camera is only 500 bucks. I was like... <laughs> Because Man, I have, my budget's like a hundred. Let's scrap a zero off of that. Like. <laughs> or, yeah, or it'd be like, it, here's everything you need to start in filmmaking, and like a thousand it's a thousand dollars. Kids. Yeah, and I was like, Ugh. and now like now that I'm kind of like making money, some of it is like, okay, I can. Mm. Now I see why this is budget, but yeah. like even like finding editing softwares. Yeah. Hit film. I used Hit Film for a long time, which is mm. kind of like they had a free version, but they also had like a paid version. I was obviously on the free version, um, but like I was like I can't do Windows Movie Maker anymore. <laughs> I did I didn't have iMovie because I didn't have a, a Mac, so I was like that was the next best thing, and it would always crash. But like going through these, teaching yourself editing on these, yeah. like oh, the memories, dude. Memories, dude. iMovie having to because I didn't get my own laptop until I went to college, so I same, would same same. I would steal my parents' laptop all the time, my yeah. dad's laptop. Yeah, I'd always edit on iMovie, and I think he started to notice that I was spending a lot of time um editing or like teaching myself editing and he was just like oh you know like the tech guy at my school gives us uh, um access to a software called like premiere pro do you know what that is and i was like <laughs> i was like do i know what that is <laughs> premiere pro <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yeah and so i taught myself premiere pro on his on his yeah. school laptop <laughs> i forgot when i got yeah I, I think the transition for me was was a little bit easier because like hit film was very close to to premiere pro that, mm-hmm. that software so i think um the first time I had Premiere Pro, I bought it because I, I had sold a video to the school mm, and they paid me 400 bucks. And I was like, OK, well, I'm going to get get Premiere Pro for for a year. Mm. And I was like, oh, this is so easy now. Oh. Um, and then I went to UCLA and they gave it to us for free. So then Shut I had up. to cancel my membership and be like, ah, I'm getting it for free. <laughs> but yeah, no, we're not students. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but shout out, Premier. shout out YouTube. What were those early projects for you? I bought the first camera I bought was a Canon Rebel T5i in 2018 and I taught myself how to use it by making family videos. I think at the time I had a really big interest in documentary filmmaking. Mm-hmm. Um except I never I never got the guts to do the interviews. <laughs> like, just you like, just got the B-roll. I just got the uh, dude B-roll queen right here. <laughs> B-roll baddie. <laughs> if you it's, guys don't know what B-roll is. It's just like the the footage that you see in a documentary that's like plays in addition to the talking head shot which is like the talking head is like the, the person, interview the interview yeah um, it's just to make it more interesting so yeah. if like if not the, if, if i'm being interviewed like oh yeah the ocean the pacific ocean mm-hmm. has this density you would see like an actual shot of the pacific of the ocean. ocean that's and then real alan in the ocean he's just like <laughs> pondering in the ocean um so i would take it to um 
to just document my family because I, I still to this day have a really like a project in mind about family because I, I mean, I've talked about it in the podcast and just like growing up, uh, my family would do the uh, family reunion every year. And I always thought that the, the roots and the history behind that was so rich and I've always wanted to document it. So I've just like started making little videos of my family when we'd go out on trips. And uh, I was obs- I w- in that era. I don't know why, but I was obsessed with the beach. Like I was obsessed with being from a West Coast. <laughs> It's just like I'm a West Coast California. girl. No, for real. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would just find any excuse to like get people to come to the beach with me and to make videos and stuff. So if you look at a lot of my early projects, I remember seeing their some beach of that. videos. Yeah. Their beach yeah. videos. Um, but yeah, and then so I taught myself how to use the Canon T5i. I remember looking up like how to make a cinematic video. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. So that, that was my first, that was my introduction to it, to, to content creation. Mine. I had a, I had a digital order now known as Digicams. I think that's the first thing I started mm-hmm. with because that's what we had. And it would, it would record video. Um, And I got that and I would just get my cousins and my brother and be like, okay, we're fighting in this scene (laughs) or like you guys kidnapped me and I got to get out. Hella direct. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I remember this one shot where the camera was like, and I had my, I made my parents buy me like a $14 tripod. (laughs) Um, The camera was like 20 feet away from us. And then I played back the footage and then I, and then I was like, I can't hear anything. (laughs) Lesson number one, yeah, audio. audio. <laughs> get the ca- if you don't have a mic, get the camera as close as you can to your actors. But that was like kind of like the for years mm-hmm. lessons of learning. Yeah. Like learning like just through trial and error. Mm-hmm. I remember I would try to make um, uh, music in real life videos. Do you remember that? Wait, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where they would be like, they're having a conversation and like they would make it so that it's lyrics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember making those. I remember making um, stop motion um, Lego movies Damn. about meth. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a drug dealer. <laughs> the police came and they had a shootout. Damn. Um, I was I was I was very proud of it. And then I looked back at it like oh, like maybe two months ago, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> but it was like 2013, 2014, maybe. Um, what else? Yeah, school projects. Anytime we talked yeah, about it last projects. time. Anytime we could make a video, we would. Um, I was very much into like guns and like fights and like (laughs) very very boy boy (laughs) boy filmmaking, like get fake guns and go and like, but that also helped me with like, like green screening and like doing the the muzzle flashes, like Mm -hmm. so that the gun looks like it's actually firing and and things like that. So yeah, because what is that? A plane? The eclipse. (laughs) <laughs> it's uh, the moon moving. <laughs> it's Gru stealing the moon. <laughs> um, I was going to say, that's so funny that um, I guess our introductions were not different or like the way that we approached it was very different and that I consider you more somebody that's very director, like like um, you're interested in directing and I'm interested in cinematography and like because you were like you're directing like let's make this video and I was just like hey guys just like look there and like be <laughs> very guess, pretty you're right, like, you're right, you're right. <laughs> very yeah. pretty and, and like don't don't look at me just don't, don't, I mean if you're gonna look at me give me a smile <laughs> yeah <laughs> like interesting everything. yeah because I would never like direct the picture I would just capture it interesting and they were also my cousins and my brother who were mm-hmm. everybody was younger than me I see so I was like oh. <laughs> like you do what I say because I'm older but, than you yeah yeah <laughs> I look at some of the videos and I'm like, oh my God, this guy's such an auteur. He's just like, no, do it like this. This is how I want to look at it with my voice. Like, dude, I sounded hella Mexican. Like I had a <laughs> thick accent. I'm looking like I was looking back at those videos and I was like, oh my God. I was like, when did that change happen? Like, when did I start? I mean, I probably still have an accent, but like when, when, <laughs> did, that, when did it subside? Anyways, I'm just laughing at you calling yourself an auteur. <laughs> This fool is such an odd <laughs> No, because like I'm, I'm, I cringe at it. Like yeah. when, I, when I look at it, if you guys don't know what an auteur is, it's just like a director who's like very, um, they want to control like everything about everything. the picture. It's like very overbearing. Like they really want their image to be like seen. Like like Stanley Kubrick's like an example. Yeah. It's like, mm, just very, my movie. Yeah. Because I think the direct translation is like holding the pen is what auteur mm-hmm. translates to, if I'm not mistaken. That was, that's what I learned at UCLA again. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, that's so funny. That yeah. <laughs> he, he was an auteur. He was an auteur. That's so, so funny. That's, that's yeah. <laughs> no, no, for real. I'm just like, and then my sisters would make video projects and I would always ask to like help. And then they'd just be like, just hold the water bottles. <laughs> I was a PA. A I was a, <laughs> started from the bottom up. <laughs> I was a PA. Oh. oh my gosh. But yeah. And then just comedy. I yeah. feel like I like to make a lot of silly things. Which like we should get back away. into. Yeah. We should make funny stuff. I feel like now when I start. I would also make a lot of comedy stuff. Like when I had a, a YouTube channel in middle yeah. school. Like when now when I approach projects, I'm like, it has to be so meaningful. And I feel like that's just like the early stages that we're in. Because I feel like when we talked to like Christina and stuff and, and she would talk about how like when she first started to how that was just such a burdenous thing of like, you have to make it mean something or you yeah. have to make an impact. And then at the, like now in her career, she's very much like, I write what's true to me and however it lands to people, I don't control that. Damn. And just like, you know, yeah. whatever you do. And I'm like, damn, I kind of needed to hear that. <laughs> yeah. And, and just like, I feel like that's the sentiment. Like Chris Carmona also said it, like mm -hmm. a lot of people want to start making like these like really sad stories and like, yeah, go for it. But also, don't be afraid to. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people silly. think that in order to get noticed, you have to tell those types of stories. Yeah. So, because yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that that is what emotionally, like you can get emotions out of people, but also can also make people laugh yeah. and do it beautifully. <laughs> we like to giggle. What can we say? Um, <laughs> yeah. That's but yeah. Cool. I hope, I hope that you guys see through that conversation how, how passionate we are about entertainment and like trying to go into this industry which requires also just a lot of time. Um, so I think that's why we're making the shift yeah. <laughs> to not prioritize this as much as we have been having to, um, whether it is just giving us more time to write our own things mm -hmm. or produce some other stuff. So this isn't definitely the last time you guys are ever going to see of us. We still, I think my vision for it is just like whenever something Latina comes out mm -hmm. and we want to talk about it, um, hop on the mics, get them, get the old mics back together. <laughs> or if we have a guest that we think would mm. be really good. Um, that's kind of what I envision. Yeah. I think just, we, we were pumping out these episodes. That, that part too. Every single week. I think, yes, on top of that, on yeah. top of like trying to shift where we start to put our focus right now. I think it was just like also like the clips that you guys see, like they're edited by somebody and just like the, all of this stuff is edited by somebody. And it's just like the turnaround times were, were very quick. Um, and I think it taught us a lot, it taught us a lot of discipline. It taught us how to, how to put on a, a show, produce something type of thing. And so for that, we're always very grateful for, um, but a little bit burnt out, might I say. Yeah, I think I think that's <laughs> a very big part of it too. Is is feeling burnt out doing, I think doing a weekly show and not getting paid for it and like having to do other stuff too, mm -hmm. um, gets gets you burnt out pretty quickly. Which I mean, more than six months I think is pretty good. <laughs> we lasted doing uh -huh. that for more than six months. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we really appreciate. The community that has formed and everybody who listens week after week um, and enjoys it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to have people come back to episodes um, and to see some of your comments or to see you guys constantly liking things on social media. I think it all that that part made it a lot easier to push through. Mm -hmm. um, but I think at, at a certain point, I'm like, oh, it's, yeah. it's starting to to get a lot. But but again, this isn't the last time. I think we're capping this as, as a quote unquote season one. Season two is just going to be whenever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whenever we want to get behind the mic. <laughs> but I mean, I'm hoping that we're able to work on some of our own projects and um, still share that with you guys. Showcase maybe. them with you guys here. Yeah. yeah. Showcase them maybe through the hand-me-down page, maybe through our personal accounts. Yeah. Um, which so yeah if you want to follow along follow along <laughs> yeah um but yeah i think just changing our focus i think is something that that we got to do right now yeah and i think if you guys just want to keep up obviously so keep on following the the social medias the hand me down social medias um that's really the best way to keep up and know when a new episode is going to drop or like 
if we want to say something really quick, like about something that we saw <laughs> or something, <laughs> or we want to rant about something, mm-hmm. you can find that on the social medias. Um, you can also follow our personal social medias, which are always linked down in the description down below. Um, and yeah, I think we want to thank Milena too sure. for hopping on board um, and playing an integral, int- int- play, playing an important role <laughs> in shaping the podcast and helping us out and being here every week to help us record and, and being of assistance wherever we need her. Um, and thank you guys as well. I don't know. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to say to the to the people <laughs> to the people to the people this 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 has been so fun and it will continue to be fun oh my god we're not <laughs> living <laughs> completely <laughs> but yeah i think i mean we talked about it before like the podcast started at a time of our lives where we were just like so lost and just like yeah trying to trying to get a grip on something um me as a control freak i <laughs> was just like trying to feel like a sense of of like i was able to do something and i feel like now is more like that again but with my personal life so i feel like taking a step back is going to be very helpful <laughs> when it comes to that yeah so yeah Shout out to, yeah. to y'all. <laughs> yeah, you reminded me like th- this podcast came about it at a time where I think I was also feeling very lost. And I, I always joke to Natalia, I'm like, if you ever see me being really creative or really posting stuff online, <laughs> you know that I'm going through <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> know that I'm going through it because that's my outlet to kind of let stuff out, uh, let my anxiety or like energy out mm-hmm. is like doing something quote unquote meaningful (laughs) (laughs) talking to you guys and bringing light to some of these issues that we will continue to fight for for the rest of our lives um has been has been that outlet um but it can also sometimes just be like exhausting sometimes so trying to find a, a good balance is always key and i think that's what this next part is it's just balance. So yeah, I'm appreciate you guys for being a part of that journey and, and allowing us to not just be screaming into a void and screaming to you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you for letting me scream at you and you <laughs> and you <laughs> and laugh, and like, um, giggle a lot and, and, and laughing. So <laughs> lots, lots of great memories, a lot of new skills acquired, and mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of awesome people met. Yes, yes, a lot if of you guys, awesome people met. You guys have been a guest, and you guys have have continued to listen. Like, oh, I, I'm glad we got to have those conversations. Some of these people were people that we had our eyes on or like kind of always wanted to talk to. Mm -hmm. Uh, I never kind of really had a a way to kind of start that conversation. So (laughs) we use this as an excuse. Jump on the pod. (laughs) (laughs) So if you hopped on, thank you so much. It it really means a lot um, to have that opportunity to to discuss stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was a blast. It was so fun. Shout out to y'all. Shout out. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I feel like every... 10 seconds were like, oh, and this, and, and then, this. And then, and then, and then actually, uh. <laughs> we should have written something down, but I, th- I think that yeah. might be the end of it. Um, <laughs> my Latino artist recommendation of the week is going to be one of our past guests, um, Los Brownies. Um, I think that <laughs> yeah. is a relationship too that, that I'm really glad we found them mm-hmm. at this time. And I'm really glad that we have that connection and that, that we can still stay close. I really enjoy their podcast. Like honestly, mm-hmm. if, if there's anything that came from this is, is finding that podcast and yeah. like having a blast with it. So if you guys miss our episodes, I would really recommend that you check them out mm-hmm. um, and support them. So yeah, I feel the same. I feel, <laughs> I li- literally was listening to their podcast earlier today and it just like brings so much joy. They're such genuine people and you know, we, um, collabed with them so check out that episode but also just go check out all of their episodes they're so funny so like I, I feel like I'm picking up on lingo from <laughs> nice, watching this nice, nice. I feel like Jesse shout out to you because you're always saying shout out <laughs> See? yeah 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 because yeah, yeah. I was wondering I was just like I wonder why I always like lately have been saying like oh shout out this shout out that literally because of that <laughs> podcast because she's always saying that so it's so funny and I literally I cannot wait to see you guys reach the stars so that is my Latino artist as recommendation as well yeah. <laughs> retweet <laughs> so, and with that thank you guys for listening this week mm. we will see you 
when soon. we see you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you, guys. The Hand Me Down podcast is produced and hosted by Natalia Delgado and Alan Gallardo. This episode was edited by Alan Gallardo and the social media clips are edited by Natalia Delgado. And I'm the associate producer, Milena Ortega. Should I reveal my sty? <gasps> at no. the end. I'll put it at the end. At the end? Okay, okay. Easter egg. I'll just like put it like this. And then cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to slowly like... Cut. <laughs> 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 <laughs>